Okay, so no questions from those sections? Yes. Um, 23 and 9.4, I 20. got it right. But you did? I just I didn't do it the same way the book does and don't know if the method I used would okay. work all the time. Gotcha. 9.4 you said? Yes. Alright. 23 in section 9.4. And so it says the diagonal of a square. Is 26 six inches find the length of a side all right so if it's a square what do we know about squares we know that squares all the sides are Equal the same length right so we can say this and what do we also know about a square all the angles, the angles are 90 all the angles are 90 degrees right so we know this is 90 degrees this is 90 degrees so what that tells us and, and they, they said that the diagonal for this was 26 inches so how does that relate to the problems we've been looking at in class? Well, that means that we have a we have a right triangle, right? Where all where the length. I need to draw my angles quite right there. Um, a right triangle, triangle like that with a with a hypotenuse of 26 inches, and we don't know the length of these sides, but what we do know is that the length of the sides are the same, right? Because it's the sides of the square. So, um, do you want to walk me through how you tackled this problem? That's actually exactly what I did. The answer key did something different. Okay, so they so they didn't draw this diagram? I don't think so. Really? Interesting. So yeah, that's how you would have to do this one. And so based on the Pythagorean theorem, we could say that x squared plus x squared equals 26, right? Square. Square. Thank yeah. you very much. I did that on, totally did that on purpose. Plus one, two. Make sure you don't call that. That's right. <laughs> so what is this? What's x squared plus x squared? 2x two two squared, x squared, right? And then 26 squared. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even going to um, figure that out. Even though I could, if I wanted to, I could totally do that in my head, right? But I'm just I'm going to uh, go ahead and take the square root of both sides. So then it goes away. And so over here I've got the square root of 2x equals 26. Does everybody agree with that? Okay, and so divide both sides by square root of 2, and x equals 26 over square root of 2. We never want to leave the radical on the bottom, so how would I get rid of that radical? A? Multiple the numerator and the uh, denominator by... Uh, I, I knew what you were saying. Right, I got it, I got it. Okay, <laughs> calm down. Deep breath. All right, so that's all right. 26 square root of 2 divided by 2 would be the answer for that, right? Um, I don't know, did they give you a decimal answer or did they give it to you like that? Um, they reduced it to yeah, yeah. 13 square root 2 and then a decimal of 18.4. 18 point what? 4. Mm -hmm. 4. Um, what, would, what would the unit be for that? I don't think it gave us the inches. Did it say it was inches? So yeah, we should be able to do the unit on that as well. Let's say that it's that value. Okay. Um, I don't know. I would be curious to know how they told you to do it, because no. that's the way that I would do I it. I see what it was now. It was the math part. I somehow managed to skip the first section and get it to the square root of 2x equals 26 without doing the... Oh, without doing of... this piece here? Okay. I got you. I got you. But do you see how this is, yeah. this is what it would work out to be? Okay. All right. For those of you that, are, that joined us... On video after I wrote that on the board that was irrelevant to this problem all right so don't get confused by that there are the paper towels I was looking for them <laughs> I'll put those over here all right any, any other questions yes uh, it was a 9.5 and I think it was 33 it was it wasn't that confusing it was just like one part it was it was just the part where I got to like, hang on, I gotta open it up for that. Thirty-three. Yeah, it was just. So twenty-two 30, degrees. 30, yeah, that one. X Y. So I got to like sine twenty-two equals six over x. Okay. But That's right. Oh, right, right, let's stop right there just a second. So she said sine. Sine of twenty-two. Of twenty-two degrees equals. 6 over x. Does everybody know how she was able to say that? 
Not you. I know you know how to do <laughs> Yeah? Because side equals opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse, right? So that's the value of the side that's opposite this angle divided by the, the length of the hypotenuse, right? Um, you're already on the board, right? Is that you? Ah, that's what you guys yeah. were about. I was like, you're probably smiling because I put the wrong name on there. Did you guys switch the sides you were sitting on? Yeah. Oh, that's just wrong. Did you, did you do that on purpose? Were you testing me or just wanted to Maybe. make things up today? Okay. Maybe. Wow, that's bad. <laughs> How am I going to remember that now? Um, we'll switch, we'll switch back. Do you, do, you always wear the, do you always wear the pigtails? Is that a pigtail if it's braided like that and comes down? That's called a braid out. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't ever wear my hair down. That's okay. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know how I'm going to figure that out. The oh, we'll you see. are the Georgia Tech fan. So the Georgia Tech fan <laughs> is Camille. I don't know how I'm going to remember that either. So, all right. <laughs> oh, well. Um, I'm sorry. Well, my dad's name is also Jamie, and he went to Tech. Yeah? So that helps me go in that. No way. In no way at all does that help me. Um, Camille. Yeah, I got nothing. It's like when I was on campus... Camille. <laughs> Camille Campus. Is it, is it there, huh? Camille Campus. Camille Campus, but then I'll think Cameron Campus. That kind of works too, you know? So, anyway. All right. Well, well I'll try to work on that. We'll switch um, back next week. Yeah. Huh? We'll switch back next okay, week. Okay, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, that's, so that's how you would find, this is the formula that you would use. And then you multiply both sides by x, right, to get x out of the denominator there. So we have x. Sine 22 degrees equals 6. Everybody agree with that? Mm -hmm. Now we could go ahead and plug sine 22 into our calculator if we wanted to and get a, get a decimal value for that. Um, or we could just continue doing the algebra here and say divide both sides by sine of 22 degrees. All right? Remember, that's just a number. Just like if we had 3x equals 6 and we would divide both sides by 3, we could do that. And so what we can punch in our calculator at the very end would just be sine, 6 over sine of 22 degrees, right? And um, I don't know what that answer would be, so I can yeah. punch that in if they want to. There's, theirs was um, uh, 16, I think. 16? 16. On the notes? No. Oh, uh, no. Okay, I got Yeah, it, it was just 16. Okay. Or something. 16, 40, 0, 40. So somebody else tell me, how would I find y? Oh. Somebody else. Somebody else. Somebody that's not on the board. Six. Well, I guess you're not on the board, are yeah. you? Yeah. Okay, you so you, 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 you're allowed to tell me. How would I find y? So the tangent of 22, which is, tangent is, Opposite over adjacent. That's right. Which would be six over y. This is the opposite side of twenty-two. The side next to twenty-two, whichever side is touching the angle, mm -hmm. but not the hypotenuse, right? So tangent equals opposite over adjacent y. And so when we solve for that, we would get y equals when it's all said and done, y equals six over the tangent of twenty-two degrees, mm -hmm. right? And that's what you would punch in your calculator. Right. And that's 14.9, I think. 14.9. All right. So any, any questions about that problem? Or anything else? Yes? Um, I'm wondering what you're punching into your calculator. How are you punching into the word? So I'm, I'm, hitting, I'm hitting 6. Then I'm hitting the division sign. <laughs> and then I'm hitting the tan sign. The tan symbol. You should have a tangent symbol on there. Do you have that? If you have a scientific calculator, you yes. do, right? You have to have a scientific. Or you don't, do you not have your calculator with you? Oh, you do. Oh, you got all kinds of stuff on there. You got. Surely there's a tan. Do you see tan on there? Yeah. You do? Uh, no. No. Okay. <laughs> it's got to be a scientific calculator here. So let's see. But it looks like. There's a bunch of stuff on there. Yeah. Yeah. Thirty-six. Wow. Tangent is a tri trigonometric function. Oh, here it is. Here it is. See right here. See tan? Mm -hmm. So you're going to say 6 divided by the tangent of 22. 
You're going to close your parentheses because there are no missing parentheses in there. And then you get 14.5. Oh, okay. See that? Now, you're gonna, what we're going to use today is these tan negative 1, cosine negative 1 inverse tangent. So for that one, you'll have to hit the second key before you hit But Okay? Uh -huh. Make sense? Anybody else need help with their calculator to find those trig functions on their calculator? You got it? Can everybody get these answers if you type that in? Yes. Like I said, you, if, if the sine of 22 degrees is confusing you, right, I'm totally okay with you at this point saying, um, oh, I mean, actually at this point, if you wanted to, you could punch sine 22 in your calculator. What do you get if you do that? Um, you get 0 0.37. 0 0.3 what? 0.3746. So we'll just write around at the 375, okay? So you could have that equals 6 over x. If that's easier for you to think about, and, and the, the, the algebra makes more sense after you do that, that's fine. It's just what you need to realize is that because you went ahead and rounded right here, your answer may be off by just slightly from what my answer is, right? And so um, if it's a multiple choice test, you may see something that's like, like instead of, you know, right here, instead of 14.9, Maybe you got, because you rounded here, maybe you got 14.8 or something like that. And, uh, and so you just have to recognize, pick the, pick the answer on the test that's closest to yours. Does that make sense to everybody? But just realize that sine of 22 degrees is just a number. So we would work with it just like we work with any other number um, when we're doing algebra. Instead of multiplying both sides by x, you could also cross multiply, right? Uh, you could, yes. Yeah, so you could think of it like that. You know, you could think of sine 22 as being over, sine 22 degrees being over 1, right? And so you cross multiply and get x sine 22 degrees equals 6. Like that? Think about it like that. That would be fine as well. Yep. However, however you think best about it. But this is actually like last year's stuff, right? So this is the stuff that you guys should ha already have down. But if you're still struggling with this, I, I would go to Khan Academy somewhere and practice just rearranging simple algebraic equations, right? A equals B over C. Could you solve for C? That should be something really easy for you to do. Um, and this doesn't go away, right? This comes back in like every math class you have from Algebra 1 on. You have to use it in chemistry. You have to use it in physics. You use this type of stuff over and over and over again. So make sure that you understand that. All right, well, we probably should move on to, unless there's just really one, really another pressing question, you know, I really need to know this one problem, Mr. Walker. Is there anything else in those sections? I wish David was here. I, didn't, I never heard back from him. Does anybody know if David's all right? Anybody heard from, see David, heard from David? All right. I, I didn't get an email saying he wasn't gonna be class today. He's probably going to be watching the video. Yeah. And he's like, why are they talking about me on the video? Um, <laughs> hello, David. Hi, David. Um, all right, so let's go. We're actually going to, I, I, want, to, I want to go all the way through 9.6 today. But before I do that, I want to back up and talk about something in 9.5 that we didn't cover. Um, it was something that is used in the word problems. It wasn't in any of the word problems that you were assigned, so I'm going to assign a few other problems from that section um, this week. But um, it's the idea of the angle of elevation and the angle of depression. All right? So if you look at page uh, 561 in 9.5, you have this term, angle of elevation, listed for us at the top of the page there. And so they give an example where in example six, you are measuring the height of a Sitka spruce tree in Alaska. That sounds like fun, doesn't it? Maybe we could all take a trip to Alaska. That would yeah, be cool. Yeah. I've always wanted to go to Alaska. Uh, and we'll say Konos will pay for it, right? Because it's yeah. a geometry. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, and so you stand 45 feet from the base of the tree, right? So you've got this tall tree over here, and we know we're 45 feet away from it. And it says, um, you measure the angle of elevation from a point on the ground to the top of the tree to be 59 degrees. So what that means when we talk about the angle of elevation, it means that I'm standing over here 45 feet away. And from the ground to the top of the tree, I measure that to be 45 degrees. All right? 
Not 45. It's 59. 45 feet we stood away. 40, 59 degrees is what the angle of elevation is. There we go. Um, to estimate the height of the tree, you can write a trigonometric ratio that involves the height, h, and the known length of 45 feet. So they're saying, we, I, I want you to tell me how tall this tree is, what's the height of the tree, and we basically have this triangle, right? Now, do you guys, so do you guys understand, if I'm talking about the angle of elevation, I'm talking about as I look out and I elevate my side up, right? It's like, what's that angle that's formed with this horizontal? And the way that they listed it for this particular problem, they say that, that you find it from a point on the ground. Does everybody see that? The problem, that's important because if you see this on a standardized test like the ACT or the SAT, it may say that it's an angle of 59 degrees from where your line of sight is, all right? And let's say you're six feet tall, then, um, then the actual height of the tree, if this is six feet right here, then the actual height of the tree is gonna be whatever we calculate this H to be plus, you know, our, plus our height right here is six feet. So just kind of keep that in mind. Depending on how the problem's worded, you may have to add the height of the person that's viewing it to the H here. But here they tell us that we're, we measured the angle from the ground. So the angle of elevation is 59 degrees from the ground, and uh, so we'll be fine. Does everybody understand that distinction? You know what I mean by that? I don't want that to trip you up if you see it on a standardized test. All right, so then we have to figure out, this is our, our right triangle, right? We know this is a tree that's, that's growing perpendicular to the ground, so it's going to form a 90 degree angle, right? So this means that we can use our Pythagorean theorem. It means we can use our trig functions that we learn. Uh, which trig function am I going to use that, that relates these two sides to one another based on this angle here? Uh, what, uh, uh, Cal, with a nice Georgia Tech shirt. What you got for me, buddy? Tangent. Tangent. Thank you, Cal. Uh, tangent of 59 degrees is equal to what? Cal? <laughs> That's okay. H over 45. H over 45, because tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. Two other adventures, right? Or, or TOA, if you remember the other word. So, so, ka, TOA, or side law versus canter along half of the two other adventures. Tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. So again, we'll, we'll do the cross multiply way that you, that Brittany mentioned this time. So that means that H um, is equal to 45 times the tangent of 59 degrees. All right, so that's what I'm gonna punch in my calculator to get an answer of 74.9. And since this was feet, then this height here is also going to be in feet, okay? Any questions about how we did that problem? Yes. So whenever you're doing those trig functions, do you have to do that like squiggly line instead of the, the I'm just I'm just doing that. It's not that's not because of trig functions. I'm doing that because I'm rounding in my oh, answer. So the squiggly gotcha. line just means that that's the, that's the estimated value. It's not gotcha. the exact value. Okay. All right. Good question. So does everybody get angle of elevation? What we mean by that? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's talk about the angle of depression. Um, I know it's sad. Sad to think about that. Um, these depressed angles. This is an epidemic. We've got them all over the place. These, these depressed angles. <sighs> but anyway, um, let's do problem 39 in the book. All right. So this is a fun problem because it's a ski slope problem. And I was just on the ski slope not too long ago, and I was like, man, I wish I had had uh, figured this out, and we could have used some actual values from the from one of the ski slopes I was on. So when you're talking about angle of depression, angle of elevation, right, is this idea where you're going, you're looking up. And so you've got some angle here, angle A, and that's your angle of elevation. But in the case of like a ski slope here, right, you've got this mountain. <coughs> See, very, I'm very artistic, yeah. right? So we've got this mountain, snow covered mountain. Actually, this isn't a good one to ski on because it's like it's only got snow at the top, right? So. We'll just have to take that away and assume that there's snow all, all across the bottom. <laughs> there we go. And, uh, and so I, I'm up here, right, on my snowboard, looking down. 
thinking, why did I do this? Why did I ride the lift to the top of this? How am I gonna get down this mountain? Um, so if I'm looking out, we'll just do it from where my feet are, like this, across, across the horizon, parallel to the, to, the, uh, to the ground all the way down to the bottom, then that's gonna form what we call B here, um, B equals, angle B equals the angle of depression. All right, so A, angle A equals angle of elevation, and angle B is angle of depression. So angle B only makes sense if you're up above the ground, right, looking down. And so if you see those terms on the test, that's what it's talking about. And so this particular problem here says that um, the angle that your line of sight makes with a, with a line drawn horizontally is called the angle of depression. The vertical drop <coughs> excuse me, is the difference in the elevation of the top of the mountain of the slope. I'm sorry, and, and the, angle of the, the difference in the elevations of the top and the bottom of the slope. And so what that means is that um, in our drawing here, let me just draw it again. The distance from where we're standing to the bottom of the mountain is x. That's our vertical drop. They give us a nice diagram so that we understand all of this. And um, but they say um, if we know that the the elevation of the mountain. So up here up top it's 5,500 feet, and down here at the bottom it's 5,018 feet. And I'm snowboarding down from here to here. What is the distance D that I snowboarded? Okay? So do we, and they tell us that this angle of depression right here is 20 degrees. Do you think I have enough information to calculate D? The answer should be, it's a question in the book, so obviously I have enough information to figure it out, right? But how would I figure that out? Um, so this right here, this is the vertical drop. This is a straight line down to the bottom. So that's going to form a, form a right angle, right? You have a, an idea there? Okay, so you just subtract the elevation at the bottom of the slope from the elevation at the top of the slope, and you get 182. All right, so what she did was she said that means that x here, this vertical drop, it's got to be equal to 5,500 minus 5,018, which was 400 what? 82. 482. 482 feet. So now we know x, um, but we need to know an angle. So if this ang angle is 20 degrees here, do we know anything about the angles in here? Somebody else. Brittany? The angle that's opposite the 500 It's kind of hard to say. Let's, yeah. Let me make it a little easier on you. What if I label these A, B, C? Which angle? Angle A is 20 degrees. Angle A is 20 degrees. Now, how did she know that? Because the diagram tells us. Because the diagram tells us? <laughs> that's, that's not how I thought you were going to know that. The way I thought you were going to know that is you were going to recognize that our line of sight is basically forming a line that's parallel to the bottom. If it's, if it's forming a line that's parallel to the bottom, if I know that this angle here is 20 degrees, right? What did we learn from parallel lines? We learned then that this angle here also has to be 20 degrees. Does everybody see that? Man, I can't believe the, the book told you that. <laughs> um, but that's the key for these angle of depression problems. You have to recognize this, right? You're using some line of sight that's parallel to the ground. And so because you've got two parallel lines, then this angle here is going to be the same as that angle there. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Nod your head in full agreement. I've heard a lot of sirens. And so here's my, here's my get. I'm thinking that Ruth Ann is hiding out from the cops in here is what I think is happening, right? <laughs> no, so, I don't know. Just a lot. I never hear as many sirens except when she's been in the class. Maybe that's where David is. But that's where David is, maybe. Maybe David's on the run. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, so let's see um, let's see what we got. We got x here, 4, 482. So let's just draw, we got a lot of stuff on our diagram here, so let's draw it a little bit simpler. We got a, an angle of 20 degrees. This is not drawn the scale because that looks more like 45 degrees. 
but that's okay. This is 482 feet, right? And we're trying to find this distance D. So which, I'm missing somebody. I'm missing Mary. There we go. Which trig function, somebody else, which trig function am I going to use for 20 degrees that's going to relate that distance 482 to the distance D? Sine, Jackson? Okay. Jackson is correct. Because Jackson recognized that D in this diagram here is our, our hypotenuse, right? And so this is the side that's opposite our, our hypotenuse. And so we can say that the sine of 20 degrees is equal to the opposite side, 482, divided by D. And um, again, we'll, uh, we can cross multiply. Say that, and then we divide both sides by sine to get the D all by itself, right? Those cancel out, and so D equals whatever 482 divided by the sine of 20 degrees is, and, oh, somebody wanna do the math for me? With the calculator? 1,409.3. One thousand four hundred and nine. One thousand four hundred and nine point three. All right, we'll just round it to that. So we'll say that. And what unit is that? It's feet. It's in feet. All right. Let's see if that's right. Let's see what the back of the book says. Thirty-nine. Chapter nine. 9.5, 1409. That's exactly what they got. Yes. We did it. Did I lose anybody along the way, though? Is everybody following? Anybody still stuck on the top of the hill, dreading going down that black diamond? This actually, if it's only got a 20 degree, I, I need to figure out what the what determines a black diamond versus a blue square versus a green circle. I don't really know. I'm guessing it has to do with this angle of uh, the pressure or elevation, however they calculate. No questions? Seriously? Everybody got this? You got it? Still with us, Kate? That hat's kind of coming down there. It always looks like your right eye is closed, so I didn't know. You are half asleep on me. You got it? All right, so now, in all of these problems that we've done using the trig functions, they've always given us an angle, right? What if we don't have an angle? You don't have to adjust your hat, man. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> oh, now the right, now the other right. No, I'm joking. Um, what if we need to find the angle, right? What I thought was David's question that he sent out. We didn't know how to do that, given the tools that we, that we went over last week. But, but today, I'm going to arm you guys with the tools that you need to find out the angle okay so that's section 9.6 and um, in fact they have a when you're finding the um, let's, they give us a three four five triangle as an example here so we've got three four five that's a pretty common right triangle like with the, the three right triangles that I, I kind of always remember in my mind are the is the two right triangles that we learned in class right what were they what were their special triangles 45 45 45 45 90 right and so let's just make sure that you guys have those because those are really important right we've got 45 degrees here and also 45 degrees here 90 degrees here then that means that the length of this side is what? Anybody remember? We, we, we could, I said we could remember it as 1, 1, square root of 2. Oh, yes. Or you could think of that as 1x, 1x, square root of 2x, right? You need to find another triangle that's similar to that, right? And then um, if we do the, the other one was the 30, 60, 90 triangle. So 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. And for this one, who can tell me the length of the sides? What's the length of the side opposite the 30 degrees? Does anybody know? 80? Just one, right? Just one, right? So one here. Um, 
I always remember there's a one, two, and a square root of three. And so it's like whichever side is the longest side is always going to be the what? Two is the longest, but what's the longest side always going to be? The hypotenuse. The hypotenuse, right? So two goes here, square root of three here. And you can think of those again as having x's after each of those numbers if you're trying to find a triangle that's similar to it or working with a triangle that's similar to that, okay? But I remember that right triangle, and then the other one that I remember is the three, four, five triangle. Um, it's just one that shows up a lot in problems. So that's basically the triangle that they gave us here. They said this was three centimeters, this was four centimeters, and this was five centimeters. And so what if I want to find this angle A right here? How would I do that? What do I know from our, um, from our trig functions? Give me a trig function that uses angle A. Anybody, if you're not on the board, even better. How about somebody not on the board, give me a trig function that uses angle A. You have three options. Sine is fine. Kind of right. Sine of A. All right, Piper. What else? What is sine of A equal to, given what we've got here? She's like, oh, no, why did I say something? Um, what's our what's our little what's our little word or saying sakatoa so so sokatoa so what does the o and the h stand for over our horses <laughs> sound our horses you can remember that but what the main thing is o stands for something and h stands for something in our right triangle s stands for sign yeah, it's over so sine is, this stands for hypotenuse, but it's opposite oh. over hypotenuse. So all of them are something over something else. So this is opposite over hypotenuse, this is adjacent over hypotenuse, and this is opposite over adjacent, right? So sine is okay, hey, you got your name on the board, right? Uh, sine A equals opposite, which is three, over hypotenuse, which is five, okay? That's sine A. Now, how do you find A? Well, the way that you find A is you use the inverse sine function. Okay, so on your calculators, in addition to having a button that looks like this, you should also have a button that looks like this. And it may be on the same button, but you have to hit the second key to choose sine inverse. All right? And so the way that you use sine inverse is if sine A is equal to 3 fifths, then that means that A is equal to sine inverse of three-fifths, okay? That's what you would punch in your calculator. Now, if you have a fancy calculator, you may have to make sure that your calculator is set to use degrees instead of radians. But if you've got just a standard scientific, it's probably in degrees by default. So what value do you get when you do A equals sine inverse of three-fifths? Three, six, point eight, six. 3, 6. Did you say 0. 0.86? Yeah. Or 8, 7. Eight, seven. Right, we'll just round this to 36.9. How's that sound? Okay, yeah. We'll do one decimal place. So 36.9 degrees. Did everybody get that? What if I hadn't used sine? What if I used one of, one of my other functions? Okay, let's try another one. Let's try, let's try cosine. Cosine of A equals what? The adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So cosine of A equals 4 fifths. So if I want to find A using cosine, I would say that A equals the cosine, the inverse cosine of 4 fifths. I would punch that in my calculator. Punch that in and make sure that you get 36.9 degrees for that as well. Same thing? Liana says, absolutely. All right? But there's one more option. Right? Any, you could have used any of the functions because we had all of the sides here, so it doesn't matter which one you use. What's our last option? Liana, since you said yes, that's correct, what, was our, what would our last option be? The tangent. the tangent, right? So I could say tangent of A is equal to what? It's okay. That's okay. It happens to me all the time, more often than I'd like to admit. Tangent is what? That's right, so 3 over 4, right? 
3 over 4. So A equals the tan inverse of 3 over 4. So if you punch that in your calculator, you will get the exact same answer. So any of those scenarios would have worked, right? Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah? I haven't seen you shake your head yet. Does that make sense? Sort of. Yeah, you want me do I need to go over it one more time? <laughs> okay. I don't mind. It's just like multiplication undoes division, right? Or subtraction undoes addition. The inverse function undoes the 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 other trig function that it corresponds to, right? So it's like the sine the sine inverse of sine a just gives you a sine inverse undoes sine, right? So really, what we did here is we were when we had this this problem, uh, we took the you know how algebra whatever you do to one side of the equation you have to do to the other. Well, we did the sine inverse of both sides of the equation, but when you take the sine inverse of the sine, you just get whatever the angle is right here. So that gives us a equals sine inverse of three fifths. Okay. Yes. So does this mean that a is 36.9 degrees. That's exactly what it means. Okay. So that's what this angle is right here. 36.9 degrees. <laughs> what if I asked you to find this angle? We could do we could do a couple of ways. Aiden, what would you suggest? Um, you can use the triangle sum and add up 90, 36.9, and then your remainder of x is going to be the... Yeah. yeah, the easiest way for this is since we know this is 90 degrees and we know all the angles in the triangle total 180, then this has got to be 90. This one has to be 90 minus that, right? Because those two have to add up to 90. So that would be the easiest way to find that, that other angle. Okay, um, so let's just do a couple of problems and make sure that we understand that. And, uh, and then we'll assign some homework this week to give you some practice with that, okay? Um, so let's try this first problem. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have erased that. I'm gonna leave the rest just in case we need it. So they give us a right angle Looks like this. They tell us this is a right triangle. Um, 3, 2, C. And we have B, A, and uh, uh, C right here. And they say solve the right triangle. In other words, they want us to find everything in this right triangle. Um, I don't want us to find everything because I don't want us to take that long. But I do want us to find C, and I want us to find... A. We'll say, can we find C and A? Okay? Which C? How would I find C in this triangle? <coughs> Which C? Bless you. Oh. Uh, the little C. Sorry, this little guy here. Well, what would I tackle first? If I just said solve this right triangle, are you going to try to find these angles first, or are you going to try to find C first? Or does it matter? Aiden? Is it possible to redraw it so it's the correct way up as well? I, I, I could. But I would rather not do it, because I would be wasting ink. So, but I'm happy if you wanted to just sit on your head, so it'll be right side up for you. No, okay. Um, yeah, if we, if we redrew it, now it makes a good point, right? Sometimes our brains just work better if we draw it a particular way. There's nothing wrong with redrawing your triangle, right? Um, so I could totally draw it like this if I want to, and, um, Label it that way or orient it whichever way is easiest for you, right, to think of it in your head. Um, that's always fine. But those are the same two triangles, right? Just draw them, just, I've rotated the triangle. Um, I actually kind of, this one here, I, I rotated it. I actually flipped it and then rotated it, right? Um, so thinking about that, does it matter if I, do I have to find it in a particular order? Do you think? I, I really don't, because I have, I, I could use, and let, let's just set it up. I won't actually give you the values, but let's set it up. Let's say I want to find A first, 
right? Well, I know that there's a function, there's a trig function that relates the known values to A, right? What's the trig function that relates the 3 and the 2 to A? Huh? Tangent. Tangent does, right? Who said that? I don't know. I just tell, but I said tangent. Who said tangent? You did? Okay. Tangent of A equals opposite over adjacent equals 3 halves, right? So that would be a, that would be a function that, that uses the values that we've got there. What if I wanted to find B? Can I find B? How? Which trig function? What are these two sides compared to B? What, what is 3 compared to B? Angle B. Adjacent. It's adjacent. What is angle two? Uh, what is side two compared to B? Opposite. Opposite. So we're gonna have to use tangent again, yeah. right? Tangent of B is equal to, but the, but it's flipped. Our fraction is flipped. It's equal to two over three. So we see that. And then if I wanted to find little c, then I'm using the Pythagorean theorem: a squared, two squared plus b squared, three squared equals c squared, right? So that's my three equations that I would use to find each of those values, right? And so to find this one, I would do A equals the tan inverse, three halves. For this one, I would find B, I would say B equals the tan inverse of two thirds. And if I did the math for that, that's four plus nine, uh, which is 13. So C equals the square root of 13, I think. Did I do that right? You guys check my math. Is that look right? Yep. And we can, we can make sure our answers were right here. If we punch this in the calculator, if we punch A and B in the calculator, we would get that... Um, uh, Oh, let me, um, okay, let me, let me do this and then I'll make an important point here. Um, so B, they said was 33.7. And if I punch this in the calculator, I got 56.3, right? If I calculated those and those didn't add up to 90, I would have known I did something wrong, right? Because those angles should total up to 90. Um, I should have told you guys, depending on your calculator, I'm sorry, some calculators make you do the tan inverse in the opposite order, right? So you would do, some, of, some calculators may not let you type in tan inverse, um, and then it'll kind of write that down and give you the parentheses, and then you type in 2 divided by 3, for example, and then you close the parentheses and you hit equals. Some calculators want you to do 2 divided by 3, then you punch in tan inverse and hit your equal key. So does anybody have one that does it like that? No? Okay, good. Yeah, most of the newer ones do it this way, but um, they actually showed in the, in the textbook that it could be the opposite. So that's kind of the old calculators used to make you do it like that. All right, um, any questions? Let's jump to one last problem. Like I said, I want to get you out of here a little early, so if you guys have any questions about the quiz, then you can come ask me. Um, let's do a word problem, because those are always the, the ones that strike fear in the students. Um, and this was about a space shuttle. Did anybody get to see the space shuttle whenever the space shuttle was still launching? No? Anybody ever go see one? Did you see that, Aiden? Was it a really, really clear day? Like, did you see it for a while? It was. It was oh, cool. Cool. We drove all the way down to Florida for, to see the very last space shuttle launch. And they estimated we were there with about a million other people seeing that last launch. Did you see one, Jackson? Yeah, my whole family is from Florida. Okay. And we live like right there. We would see like pretty often like rockets and space shuttles. Yeah, all right. The time. That's really cool. I want to go down and try to just see a rocket launch. Um, but uh, the, the last, the very last space shuttle launch, so it was cool that we got to do that as a family and say we saw the last space shuttle, but it was cloudy that day, and so it lasted about like 
two seconds. <laughs> it was gone. We couldn't see it anymore. You know. When was that? Um, wow, I don't know. That's been that's been a while back. I have no idea. Yeah. I'm guessing. 12 years, 15 years ago? I don't know. I don't know when the last space shuttle. Yeah, was, was it that long ago? I can't grab my phone and look. Um, I was probably in the All my kids were at home, so it's been a while. Um, so the space shuttle, dear, this shows you how old this book is, right? Because the space shuttle wouldn't be landing if it was a new book. Um, during its approach to Earth, the space shuttle's glide angle changes. It says when the shuttle's altitude is about 15.7 miles, so the altitude is its distance from the ground, right? It's that high above the ground. So when its altitude is 15.7 miles, um, its horizontal distance to the runway is about 59 miles. So at that point, it's about 59 miles from the runway, right? And so, what is its glide angle? And so they note, they show you in the diagram that the glide angle is this angle right here. Right? So we'll just label that angle A. So how would I find that glide angle A using my trig functions? Which function am I going to use? So, Tangent, that's right. Who said that? Did you say that? Wow, we got another one on the board. All right. Um, is that right? Yes, you got so, it. So, Anna, what, is your middle name Mary? It's not, okay. Don't use it your middle initial middle though? Huh? Uh, okay, so, but it is Elm. See, every time I see Elm for her middle name, it's like Anna Marie. Because that seems like that goes together. And so then when I see you knowing that you use your middle name, I'm like, is it Marie or Lee? I don't know. All right. Um, so she's right. And again, how does she how does she think through that? She thinks, she looked, here's angle A. And she says, I know two, the length of two sides. What are those two sides as they're related to angle A? This side is adjacent to angle A, and this side is opposite angle A, right? So the only uh, trig function that's going to work for me is tangent. Because tangent is opposite over adjacent, right? So tangent of A equals opposite over adjacent, which is 15.7 divided by 59, right? And so I'll, I would punch that in my calculator and get some um, numeric value. Or I could say, well, now I can do the tan inverse and say that A is equal to the tan inverse of 15.7 divided by 59 and punch all of that in my calculator. And I should get an answer that's around 14.9. What unit? Huh? Degrees, right. right? That's kind of a trick question. Units are miles here, but we're talking about an angle now, so the, the, the unit is degrees, right? All right, I think that's probably, I think that's enough. I think you guys got that. Um, any questions? On how to use the inverse trig, inverse trig function. Yes. So this isn't really a question. Just something I noticed while I was doing the homework is that um, it was just kind of weird because whenever you would find like the sine, cosine, and tangent and of like a and b. Right. So like the sine of b and the cosine of a were the same, and the sine of a and the cosine of b were the same. Yep. And the tangent were just. We're we'll always flip. Yes. Always the inverse of one another. Yep. Yeah. So that will always happen in a right triangle. That was that was the sine of one angle will be the cosine of the other angle, uh -huh. right? And vice versa. And then the tangent of that angle will be the inverse of the tangent of the other angle. So once I start noted, started noticing that, I would just like stop doing the work. I would just I would right? just put it over and. Yeah. All right, guys.